How to Improve Stage Presence as a Speaker. We're going to talk today about 10 secrets I'm going to give you about how you can improve your presence and performance. I'm excited to take you through this. Here we go. Have you ever watched a speaker take the stage and command the place in such a way that you're like, wow, how did they do that? I'm gonna give you some of these ideas as a performer, speaker, and entertainer for the last 25 years. It's been a wonderful career, and I've been able to take a lot of stages around the world. So talking about this is sure fun for me. I'm excited for you to join me. Here we go. Number one is to know your material inside and out. You've seen actors who run lines with each other. You've seen performers and dancers who practice a routine over and over and over again. I mean, I know of performers who sing one song, but they've practiced it a thousand times before they ever sing it in front of anybody. Knowing your material inside and out matters when you're a speaker especially, because when you get on stage, your mind can go blank, especially if you've memorized something, and so knowing your material inside and out allows you to get through it. What I'd recommend you to do is to start to rehearse. A lot of people just don't take the time to do this. They think, oh, I can get up and wing it. No, don't do that. You want to make rehearsal a part of your strategy and your schedule. Every single chance you get to get in front of a camera or on stage somewhere, rehearse, get ready. You're going to have way more success when you do that. Let's talk about cultivating body language awareness. When it comes to your body language, what happens when you go on a stage? Are you nervously pacing back and forth? Are you leaning a certain way? Are you not sure what to do with your hands? Are you looking all around instead of looking at specific people in the audience? There are certain techniques that you can uh, incorporate into your speaking, and when it comes to your body language, think about your posture. Think about what your hands do. What does your body move like? Unfortunately, a lot of speakers get on stage and they haven't actually practiced even wearing the clothes they're going to be on stage with. And so they might have a microphone pinned to their shirt and it might hang weird or something might be different about their hair or their accessories when they're on stage. Maybe the light is flickering off their glasses. So we need to consider all of these little things in order to get ready to be on stage. But when we talk about body language, your body says a lot, regardless of what you say with your mouth. Your body talks in confidence or in feeling fearful. There are plenty of ways in order to utilize your body. As you practice, I would recommend that you record yourself and watch it back. Now let's talk about harnessing the power of vocal variety. Yeah. I love to change my voice when I'm on stage, whether I'm doing a character or even just saying a specific line. You know, I'm not just going to be monotone like this the entire time. I'm going to go up here and then I'll come down here and say something very profound if I want with a lower voice or I'll slow it down, or I'll speed it up. Just depends on what I want to do. If I want to create some more energy and get things really flowing, then all of a sudden I change to a little bit of a different pitch. There's ways that we can do this with vocal variety. What you have to do is practice your voice before you go on stage. If you like to do characters like I do, that's even fun too. I like to do like Mrs. Hall, who's singing in the hall, or TJ the shuttle driver. Well, hello everybody, welcome to the shuttle. So I'll do different voices and that actually changes things up for the audience. They enjoy that and that creates better stage presence for me. The problem is, is that a lot of people think, oh, I'll just get up on stage and wing it like that. No, you want to practice those voices. You want to practice modulating the voice or raising the pitch when you have to or changing up the speed depending on what you're talking about. Practice it this way and it'll come out naturally on the stage. Let's talk about utilizing the stage space effectively. When you get to an event, you want to get there earlier than everybody else. You want to get set up with the audiovisual team, make sure you have all the tools you need. But then I would encourage you to walk the entire space because you're soon going to own that stage. That's going to be your place. So are you aware of the risers if they buckle or move depending on which part of the stage you're at? Do you know if you're always in the light or in the sight of the camera? Or if you step way too close to the edge of the stage, could you possibly fall off? Or maybe you're no longer in the lights and you need to be. When it comes to owning the space, walk that stage. Get to know it. Move back and forth. Figure out your body and the language you're going to share just by owning that space. You see, people feel more confident about someone who walks out on that stage and has already been there and knows the space. 
knows where their tools are, such as if you have a PowerPoint or a computer up on stage with you. You also want to be careful of cables because sometimes they don't get taped down. Other times you want to be careful that there could be carpet or some kind of chair or a couch in the way. And if you get on that stage and you don't know that you can just move that real easily, I mean, you need to be able to know those things prior to taking the stage. One thing I like to do to own that space is I'll show up early enough that it's just the event planner, the audiovisual team and me. <laughs> and then I can adjust things on the stage for myself. One of the main questions I have for a lot of event planners they're surprised by is I'll say, is anyone using that podium that's right in the center? And they'll say, oh, no, we got that for you. And I'll say, I don't need a podium. <laughs> so now we get to clear the stage. Or they'll say, yeah, we need the podium for the MC and the awards. And I'll say, can I make a suggestion just to make it so that the middle of the stage is open for when I present? And for when your awards people come up and they can have a nice clear picture. What if we moved that podium over to one side and then that allows this whole opening and your beautiful backdrop to be seen. And then they go, oh, that's a great idea. We've never thought about moving the podium from the center. <laughs> and then we just pick it up and set it over to the side. That's a great way of owning the stage and the space. Showing up early enough to be able to help the event planner and the audiovisual team to get you everything you need. So when you take the stage, you own the space. Let's talk about connecting authentically with your audience. Some of the best ways to do this is by asking a great question to start or by putting something up like a Mentimeter or Talkadot. These are tools that you can invest in to make it so that the audience has an experience with you utilizing their phone and they love that. But connecting with your audience is also essential in the sense of just being relatable. Not being so self-important when you get on the stage that they think, oh, I don't know if I want to listen to this person for the next hour, but rather to be relatable, to be authentic, to be interesting and interested in them. Like I said, I like to watch the audience walk in because sometimes when you watch them walk in, you go, okay, I'm ready to take the stage because, you know, they're not going to want to be up there, but they're cheering me on. When I do that sort of thing, I can connect with the audience. I'll go through and shake some hands and say hello. They might ask who I am and I'll say, hey, I'm going to speak in a minute if you want to be my smiling face in the audience. What's cool about that kind of thing, it's preparation before I take the stage, obviously, but once I get up on stage, I, I look out and I see my buddy and I go, hey, Bill, we talked earlier and he told me this about you guys. And then I've connected with everyone because I already spoke with someone in the audience. There's a lot of ways to connect with the audience. I say through authenticity, talking with them prior, as well as sharing a vulnerable or funny story. All of those types of things connect you quickly. Next, I would recommend that you embrace silences and pauses. It's important to embrace these because a lot of speakers just talk way too fast. Performers blast right through the presentation. Sometimes we need a little bit of a pause in order to listen to what the speaker has just said. Our brain needs a chance to compute. I appreciate when someone gives a great quote and then they pause and I go, oh, I should write that down. And then they say it again for me. Ah, that's a good speaker. Not that you need to do that every single time, but rather choose your spots. Do it once in a while within the speech. Your audience will appreciate the pause. When it comes to using visual aids, I would recommend you do it wisely. Unfortunately, a lot of speakers think they need a ton of slides that has a bunch of data on it that people actually can't see or compute very quickly in their minds. So I would recommend you use this judiciously. I actually have other videos on this channel talking about this because it's such an interesting subject. Visual aids could be like a nice video or an image. You could create it on AI through ChatGPT. There's lots of options. If you have a copyrighted image, make sure that you get the copyright license or you could get in trouble. But when it comes to the visual aids, oh gosh, you don't want to rely on them. So let's just say you get there and they don't have a projector that works. Can you still give your presentation as effective? If you have slides that you've created and that you've put together, then you're okay to say, hey, I can use these or I don't need them. And sometimes it happens where you can't even use them at all. Don't allow your presentation to rely on the visual aids, but when you do have visual aids, make sure to try to keep it at about one slide per minute. That's what I would recommend is about the rule. You want them to be visually stimulating. They have to support what you're talking about. Don't just put visual aids up to have them. You want to have something that 
speaks to the story you just gave or the example as to why you're speaking about it. When I see speakers that do it too many slides, they're just cranking through them. We don't want to do that either. So make sure that you use them judiciously and wisely. When it comes to incorporating audience interaction, we've already talked about connecting with the audience, but when it comes to interaction, this is another cool concept where you can uh, get up on that stage and Maybe you could even have them dance or do some kind of interactive engagement piece. Sometimes they'll say, oh, you guys have been sitting for three hours and now I'm on stage. <laughs> I am going to need you to laugh and clap and have a good time. You need a break for a second. Everyone, please stand. And then everyone stands up and then I go, OK, fist bump the person next to you. High five the person on the other side. All right, now we're going to do the chicken dance. OK, I've gone too far. Everybody sit. This is kind of a fun engagement interaction piece. People actually appreciate it because they've probably been sitting for too long. Oh, and they need a chance to move. Now I'm their favorite speaker because they're like, oh, I appreciate that he made us stand up or that he got us interacting. And that is a fun way to make it so that they understand you're with them. And that adds to your stage presence. I would recommend that you practice mindfulness as well as being present when you're on stage. When it comes to mindfulness, that would be practicing prior, but you're practicing in your mind how you're going to present and that it's going to go well and that you're feeling good, but also then getting perfectly into the moment. Now, think about it this way. Here I am recording this video with you and we're having this nice conversation. Imagine if right in the middle of it, I just went to my phone and started texting somebody because I got a text. Like, it seems ridiculous, right? Same on the stage. Unfortunately, a lot of speakers can be distracted by something very, very random, whether it's some fly in the room or if it's the lighting is bad or the sound doesn't work out or they get a notification on their phone. I've seen speakers actually stop and look at their notifications or they look, you know, just very blatantly at their watch like they're waiting to be done for themselves. <laughs> and so just remember to be present. Be mindful that the audience is wanting you to succeed, but they also want to see you do your best. And so be fully present every presentation. Finally, I would recommend you seek feedback and continuous improvement. When you have the chance to ask other people who've seen you perform, say, hey, what do you think of what I did? It gives them an opportunity to give you some great ideas and also at the same time for you to improve each and every performance and presentation. If you're doing the same thing as you did last year, that's okay. But you want to continue to improve that to the point that they go, oh, wow, that's a great performance. And you also feel good about yourself. Unfortunately, so many speakers don't seek feedback and they just think, oh, I'm awesome and I never need to improve. That happens a lot. Don't be that kind of speaker. Seek feedback from the right people. I'd recommend somebody who knows how to do some coaching, but also somebody who's a friend and wants you to succeed. My call to action to you today is this. What I want you to do is put into the comments of the 10 secrets I've given you for stage presence, which one do you promise to commit to? If you'll please do that as well as like and subscribe, I appreciate it. I hope this has helped you and thanks for joining me. I'm excited to see your stage presence.